Welcome to the Innovation Squadcast. If you are looking for a podcast about instructional strategies enhanced by technology, you came to the right place. In our conversations, we will talk with tech experts, share ideas and strategies to help you build your toolbox with tools that you can use in your class immediately. Welcome to Innovation Squadcast, and thanks for making us part of your educational PD journey. First time listeners, welcome, and for our attorney listeners, welcome back. We are glad you're here today. We are discussing my short answer, which can revolutionize writing assessment. It is a platform, it's a dynamic tool designed to streamline the assessment process and provide teachers with valuable insights into student understanding by gamifying writing. We love our gamification here and leveraging peer review. My short answer makes the writing process engaging and interactive for students while also promoting collaboration and critical thinking skills. With the power of comparative judgment, teachers can quickly and accurately assess student work, save time, and ensure fair evaluation. My short answer makes it fun to receive and give feedback uh, for writing, creating a positive supporting learning environment while students can grow and improve their writing skills with confidence. So today on the Innovation Squadcast, we'll explore how my short answer can revolutionize assessment practices and elevate teaching and learning in classrooms worldwide. Before we get started, let's pause for this week's tech tip. This week's quick tech tip is in our Chrome Web Store. It is an extension called Tab Resize. Once added to Chrome, it will show up on the upper right hand part of your Chrome. You may have to look in the puzzle piece to find your Chrome extensions. You can hit the pin bar next to them if you want them to show up all the time uh, in your extension little bookmark page right here. This particular tab resize icon looks like two arrows in a blue box. Once I click it, it'll open up a window for me. The first thing I can do is look at my settings, knowing that I can left or right align. I can create custom layouts. I can uh, undo uh, any changes that I made. I can create an empty tab when I split, or I can just select the option here for one to two and split the two tabs that I have right there uh, with one click of a button. And then I can again uh, open up that, un uh, that extension again, and then I can undo that and it would take me back to where I was. So a quick way to create dual screens, dual tabs inside of Chrome using the Chrome extension tab resize. Hope everybody enjoyed that tech tip. I am Jimmy Kate. And I'm Eileen Fernandez Parker. And she is the one that introduced us to this. You learned it at TCEA. TCAA, absolutely. And and so we wanted to first talk about kind of, you know, introduction, kind of what is, um, you know, uh, my short answer and then, you know, kind of how can teachers use it um, to gamify writing in the classroom. Yeah. So. yeah. Okay. So um, what is it? It is a platform that was created by teachers and it's so obvious that it was created by teachers yes. um, where with short answers, um, the teacher sets a question and then up to three criteria in the free version. Okay. And then the students have a certain amount of time and the teacher decides, you know, usually you can just wait until all kids submit. And, but if they're taking too long, you can say time's going to be up. Uh, and then once time is up, then it goes into grading mode. Right. And for the students, what they see is two responses that their peers um, submitted side by side on their screen. And then the criteria is at the top of the screen and each criteria comes up one at a time. Okay. And the kids have to drag the a button that has whatever the criteria is to the one that is better for that category. And they have to do it for three. So there wouldn't be a tie. Um, and it's very strict that you can't say both or neither, you have to drag it. Okay. So there's no fence sitting for this. Gotcha. And then for the three versions of grading for all in, it's based on time. So they keep every time when they submit that they've judged two, then they get another two, and then they get another two and another two. And um, when when I did this with fifth graders, right, they were they said. No, 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 don't stop, don't stop. We're almost at 600. Right. Like, when yeah. do fifth graders say, I want to grade something else, right? right. That exactly. has to do with writing. Yeah. And then, um, so once the time is up, then the top four or the top three show up, and it kind of looks like the, um, the Olympics, you know, they're standing on a, they have a stand and they have gold, silver, and bronze. Nice. Nice. And so that's the all in with pairs. 
Oh, it's you just are, stuck right there. Okay. We did this with, again, teachers as well at the Innovation yes. Summit. And same thing. It was everybody was engaged. Everybody wanted to do it. And then two things, takeaways that I got and I understood the power of it is that, number one, I heard teachers saying immediately that we're going to do this tomorrow in our classroom. So something that they learned that they could immediately implement, right? The free version's pretty pretty robust. It you is. Know, what do they get with the free version? So, so with so, the know, free version. Wanna, the free is for me. We want to keep right, that going. Right. Exactly. Um, you get to save five questions. Okay. So, uh, and that means that you get to see all the data that goes with that question. But once you've already used up the data, you can delete that question and then you get another one back. So you can have five saved at a time. Gotcha. So if you yeah. need another and one, which you is just perfectly have to delete. Acceptable. And what's, yeah. I think the other thing we need to highlight is this is good for any subject. Any subject you can add this in. Soul studies, writing, you know, math. You can write about math. You can write about science. You can write yes. about, and this could be used at any level. Um, so that's important too. K-12, any subject, being able to just add a little element of, of uh, writing in there, right. but also having that peer reflection and peer review, which is a right. powerful, powerful um you know, learning tool that I think sometimes is underutilized. Yeah. So. And so for levels, so probably as early as fourth grade, maybe third grade, because it is all writing. Right. So your K yes. to twos might not be able to use it yet. But if you figure out a way, you know, you could get that to work. Yes. Um, but in the resources, which we'll talk about later, they do have samples in pretty much every subject. So yes. um, it gets very specific yes. and they really are focusing on high school. So you've got yes. economics and, and physics Anything, and yeah. things like that. Yes, we had a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of good feedback on this one, so, which was great as well. So yeah. um, I thought that was a, a very powerful thing. And then again, used in every subject. So all in again is what everyone, you got your two answers and everyone's involved and it's with time. Yes. Okay, so there's three different versions and then the second version's pairs. What's that one look like? Pairs is um, where you are, I believe you're paired up with another person. Okay. And then, but it, it's, you're not sitting next to each other. Um, and then you, you are still comparing and doing the same dragging motion for okay. the different criteria. But the one, though, that I love the most is Battle Royale okay. because it's like March Madness and brackets. Oh, yeah. And um, oh, it, breaks, that, yes. yeah, it breaks all the kids up into four groups. Okay. And then they compare the kids who are in that group first so that they whittle it down. And then those kids are battling the other kids until you get down to one, one student. Um, but one of the things that is super powerful is that when it's finished, you don't say, oh, yay, and then you walk away. <laughs> You bring up that question okay. and then you talk about it with the kids. Gotcha. So, so you're digging deeper um, and you want the kids then to be giving reasons for, you know, this one came up as the best. Do you okay. agree? Right. You know, um, and also when you think about it cognitively and this could go either way, like if kids are seeing the wrong answer repeatedly, mm -hmm. um, but when they see the right answer repeatedly, they are going to know it by the end of the activity. True. Like you can't not yeah, know yeah. it. Anytime you have repetition. That's yeah. Great, so. Yeah. That's great. So if a teacher wanted to get started, what would be the what would be the best way for them to get started with using this in their classroom? Okay. So I would recommend that they go to the website myshortanswer.com. Okay. And across the top, they've got teacher resources and our approach. And within those pages, they have little videos showing you exactly what to do. They also have recommendations for best what types of questions to ask. Okay, that's nice, um, yeah. Yeah, and they've also got some charts that um, help with like kids knowing how to respond. So in the teacher resources at the very bottom, they have a spark poster and a park poster and it has to do with how do you give feedback be specific be prescriptive actionable referenced and kind and then the other one for park has to do with not being judgmental so taking a perspective assume the best um, recognizing feelings and communicating so you yeah. know you know on on facebook when people right. attack sure. people for yeah. their views so this type of poster and this type of activity can maybe help our kids be better digital citizens yeah, I was thinking too. The same thing. So you're, you're <laughs> teaching digital citizenship with this particular activity. You're teaching a 21st century skill of feedback, which is something that's important. And it's also, you're teaching a 21st century skill of how to receive feedback. That's a hard, that's harder than giving right. it, is True. being able to, to truly receive feedback and internalize it and see it as an opportunity to get better and for
for growth instead of see it like an attack or mm -hmm. something like that. Because when they get out into whatever, almost any job you have, you're going to get some form of feedback of let's, how can we tweak and make this better? And right. this kind of internal reflection. So right. that's a, another real important 21st century skill that's being taught with this yes. as well. So, and so. you just, you just triggered something. Um, because it can be, you're vulnerable being judged mm -hmm. by your peers. Right. First of all, the kids take it much more seriously right. because their peers are grading them. And the, the platform has a built-in knob that you can just turn on so that everybody has a fake name. Okay. So it's anonymous until it's not. Right. So at the very end, when you wanna show who are the leaders, then you can review the names, reveal the names. Um, and But until then, you know, it doesn't have to be hurtful. So gotcha. because this was built by teachers, they have thought right. of everything. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so when you go into the resources, you can see that you can, you know, it's got all the kind of different subjects. So when you click into a subject, click into click into U.S. history, for example, okay. if I was a U.S. history teacher. So you click into U.S. history and it's going to give you teaching tips about the best questions, how to best feedback, best discussion questions. Uh, so it's going to, and it's going to give you some, some prompts. Do you want to use this as a bell ringer, check for understanding, guided practice, homework, exit tickets. It gives you a sample cases in, in U.S. history so that you can get started right there as well so you know you don't even really have to think about the questions as much as you already have kind of uh, resources out there for you so mm -hmm. and and the first time you use it i recommend that you let the kids know this is an experiment let's sure. try it out let's see how it works Absolutely. Uh, because you know some kids get very anxious and they don't want to mess up and so if they know that it is an experiment but we want to you know we don't want to say it doesn't count because then you know kids check out yes um but because you know the teachers the faculty that i use this with all the way down to fifth graders had so much fun yes even if they don't really get involved the first time i think they're going to want to be involved the next time i think so too yeah. absolutely so so yeah get, definitely go to my short answer check it out teach the feedback part and and how to and the digital citizenship skills that go along with it and then jump right into the gamifying of writing which is always a good thing we love our gamification here. i know anytime right? you can gamify anything it's going to turn out really well absolutely so check out the show notes we'll have links to uh, myshortanswer.com so that you can go right there and get signed up uh, check out, we'll have a link to the uh, podcast video if you're listening and you want to check out the video. We'll have a link to the Tech Tech video if you want to check out what we provided there. And then we also have a link to Unified Squadcast PD and Unified Talent. We've got just about a couple weeks left to get those episodes in. For every two episodes, you get one hour of renewal credit. We've got a lot of people taking advantage of that. I think we've had yeah. I think we've had over 70 or 80 teachers turn in. Nice. Uh, at least at least one. Many have done multiple. Um, so that's great as well. And how um, many do we have so far? We're up to like 70 something. This is our 74th episode. So, so people could yes. pick up 35 74th or 73rd. Hold on. 70 yeah, 74th episode. Yes. 35 easily 35 yes. hours of recertification Correct. credit. Yes. Uh, so uh, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on YouTube, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You get notifications of new episodes, and we want to hear from you. How are you using My Short Answer? Did you use it? Did, how did it go? Uh, we want to definitely hear your feedback on that. And if you want to be on the podcast, you have something that you want to share with the teachers, please let us know. We'd love to have you on. So thank you so much for being here. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Until next time. Bye. Bye.